What you're seeing is a demonstration of intermittent photic stimulation, a form of visual triggers often used to diagnose photosensitive epilepsy. It's a condition that's been making news after moviegoers watching the latest Twilight flick, Breaking Dawn, reported having seizures while watching the film. The scene, which depicts the main character in labor, has a strobe-like sequence that people say is sparking symptoms like convulsions, shortness of breath, and vomiting. Can this happen? Some believe these reports indicate instances of photosensitive epilepsy. About 3% of the 3 million Americans with epilepsy suffer from the condition. For the science behind photosensitive epilepsy and how flashing lights could contribute to seizures, we turn to Dr. Carl Bazil, director of the Epilepsy and Sleep Division at Columbia University's Medical Center. Okay, so here you've got repetitive flashes of light. Our brains, he says, are like computers with nerve cells for wires. They're made for multitasking, but during a seizure, groups of nerve cells start firing at the same time, interrupting the organ's normal activity. Seizures can vary in intensity. It can be what most people think of as a seizure, which is a grand mal, tonic-clonic seizure. So a person will stiffen, they'll have you know, very violent jerking, may fall down, will be unconscious usually for one to two minutes. You can also induce smaller episodes where they just might stare for a few seconds or you know, subtle lip smacking. With most seizures, these electrical storms in the brain appear to happen spontaneously with no known cause. Stimulus-sensitive epilepsies, however, have triggers. The act of writing or even hearing a certain strain of music can activate a sensitive part of the brain that produces seizures. In photosensitive epilepsy, a visual trigger, like flashes of light, can induce seizures. So what happens with photosensitive epilepsy is you get a stimulus that comes through the eyes, which would be in the front like this. This is how the brain sits in the head. That gets transmitted to the back of the brain. This is where the visual part of the brain is. So then you get repetitive activity in the back of the brain in large numbers of neurons. Boom, boom, boom. So with people who are photosensitive, the other parts of the brain can pick up that pattern, that repetitive stimulus, and they start firing too, and that can spread to involve more or all of the brain. So you've got large areas of the brain that are firing synchronously all at the same time, and that can result in you know, brief unconsciousness or it can result in a convulsion. Photosensitive seizures have been known to be triggered by strobe lights, video games, or television broadcasts that flash or flicker at certain frequencies. In 1997, nearly 700 people were rushed to the hospital after watching an episode of Pokemon, a Japanese cartoon that featured a flickering scene that lasted about four seconds. Those affected said they suffered convulsions, loss of consciousness, blurred vision, and headaches. Photosensitive seizures can also be triggered by natural light. Sunny day through the trees. So what happens then is you get flashes of light coming through the leaves. So it can do the same thing as if you're seeing a strobe at a certain frequency. People with photosensitive epilepsy appear to be sensitive to flash frequencies of about 8 to 12 flashes per second, Dr. Brazil says. And the intensity of the light and degree of contrast also play a role. Currently, there are no regulations to help prevent seizure triggers in movies, television, online content, or video games, according to a spokesperson at the Epilepsy Foundation of America. However, the W3C, an international group that sets voluntary web standards, offers guidelines for the industry to limit triggers. Oh, there's a disclaimer at the beginning of this that it may produce epileptic seizures. Earlier this year, the UK charity Epilepsy Action asked YouTube and Kanye West representatives to take down his music video All the Lights after a test confirmed that some sequences could trigger seizures. The video was taken down for a day before it was put back up with a warning at the beginning. As for the Twilight movie, the studio Summit Entertainment provided a disclaimer for theater distributors to display at ticket counters at their discretion. And the Epilepsy Foundation issued a warning that the film contains flashing lights, which can sometimes trigger seizures in people with photosensitive epilepsy. But Dr. Bazil says he's not convinced the film triggered epileptic seizures. Now, in that scene, there are flashes of light. They didn't strike me as being very risky uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that they were kind of slow. Uh, secondly, they didn't last very long. Usually, if people, even if people are photosensitive, they have to get the stimulus for a period of several seconds continuously before it will do that. You don't have to be an epileptic to have a negative reaction to flashing lights, he says. People generally have different tolerance levels for strobe lights. And introducing a sudden bright light after your eyes have adjusted to darkness can cause physical discomfort, such as headaches or nausea. 
For The Wall Street Journal, I'm Christina Sui.